We'll now go over adding and subtracting radical expressions. So one thing we need to define first, what are like radicals? The answer is same radicand. Remember, that's the part underneath. Same index, little number out front. Only when we have these two things are we able to add and subtract radical expressions. So I have three examples to go through. So the first one is 5 times the square root of 3 plus 6 times the square root of 3. And if you say it, it kind of sounds like what you need to do. It's very intuitive. So 5 square roots of 3 plus 6 square roots of 3 equals 11 square roots of 3. You can sort of treat those 5s and 6s, the numbers out front, like coefficients. I have 5 of them, and I'm going to add 6 more. Altogether, I have 11. My second example, I've kind of mixed things up. I have 10 times the cube root of 2 plus 4 times the square root of 3 minus 6 times the cube root of 2 plus the square root of 3. So your first thing is to figure out which radicals are like. So the 10 square root 2 is like the negative 6, I'm sorry, 10 cubed root of 2 is like the 6 cubed root of 2. They both have the same index 3, the same radicand 2. So I combine those 10 of them, I lose 6 of them. Altogether, I have 4. Notice the cube root of 2 just keeps tagging along. And then the other two terms are like as well. 4 square roots of 3 plus, remember if there isn't a number there, keep Put a 1 if you'd like. 4 square root of 3 plus 1 square root of 3 is 5 square root of 3. You cannot add these two together at this point because their radicands are not the same. Their indices are not the same. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Last example, 72 square root of n minus 8 square root of n. When we first see this, you might say, hey, I can't do anything because my radicands are different. But but, of course, this is an algebra class, and I'm going to want you to simplify it to see if you can do something after that. So recalling how we simplify radicals, so square root of 72n. We're going to think of a perfect square that goes into 72. I'll have another little radical there for the leftovers. So 72 is 36 times 2. There are many other ways to write 72. There are many numbers that multiply together to give you 72. You want to pick the pair that has the largest per square factor, so 36 times 2. There's the 72. Now the n is not a perfect square factor because it's just the end of the first, and I need an n squared to bring it out. So the n goes there. That 70, square root of 72n is going to simplify to 6 times the square root of 2n. And I'm only taking this intermediate step so that we see the only way I'm going to be able to do something is when I simplify the square root of 8n if I leave behind a radical 2n under the square root. So let's see. Square root of 4 we know is 2. Square root of 2n tags along. I'm subtracting those two parts. So I have 6 times the square root of 2n minus 2 times the square root all together gives me 4 times the square root of 2n.